up, Brian here from Ballistic Tech, and today we are back in my kind of makerspace workshop area where I'm going to be talking about two subjects that I love right now, and that is sim racing and making and DIY stuff. And we're going to smash them together and be talking about how to get started making your own DIY sim racing gear and specifically steering wheels. So I'm going to try to walk you guys through a lot of the stuff I've learned and give you as many tips as possible. So I've been kind of building this wheel for actually quite a long time, um, learning a lot about the different materials that you might want to use, the different processes that you might want to use. This is actually made from the 3D files that Zach from Turn Racing has produced. It is their Turn GTE uh, wheel and it's a, a great file. So I'm going to be, you know, using this as the primary example of how I want to teach you about all the stuff I've learned. So the way this wheel came about was that Zach was kind of requested to produce this for a real life racing driver who drives the actual car that this replica is based off of. The driver wanted to be able to have, you know, as close to the exact real steering wheel inside of his sim racing setup as what is in his real car. And uh, Zach made it for him as kind of a bespoke offering. And I think he sold a few more of them. You might actually recognize it because it was reviewed by Barry on Sim Racing Garage. He spoke very, very highly of it. And boutique scene went crazy about this wheel. It just looks so really, really cool. And uh, Zach got a lot of requests. So he's been kind enough to provide people with these 3D files. You can purchase them on his website. They're very reasonably priced. And the thing I love about his files is that he's making them off of kind of real production wheels. He gives you both the STL files as well as the step files, which is another kind of unique thing. So if you need to make tweaks to anything to you know, use different buttons, to use different grips, to do anything that you want, you have the original step files that you can you know, make those tweaks to, which is absolutely great. So I'm gonna walk you through a lot of the different parts and materials and considerations you're gonna have to make and decisions you're gonna have to make to build a wheel like this. But one thing Zach offers is bare bones kits that match up with the 3D file. So you can get, uh, depending on the wheel, either a carbon fiber front plate or aluminum front plate. There'll be a slight price difference in that. You can get optional molded grips as well. And then he sells a lot of uh, the paddles. It's a great head start for you to be able to, you know, produce the wheel that you want and not have to worry about how I'm gonna get this carbon fiber plate. So this series of videos is gonna range from very, very easy stuff that most people are gonna be able to do into some of the more difficult aspects of it, but don't get too daunted. Uh, there's a lot of resources online, Facebook groups, and one group I definitely recommend checking out is the Turn Racing DIY Wheel Builders uh, Discord server. The community is growing and growing every single day, and there's a lot of people on there sharing their own personal builds, sharing their builds of Zach's files, and just sharing a lot of knowledge, which is great. Uh, just people helping each other out, teaching each other about different uh, aspects of wheel building. You know, I discovered this secret. I discovered this person who's able to cut this thing for you and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of great resources there. And that's one of the things I love about the DIY maker scene in general, especially for sim racing gear, is that you can apply your specific skill set, the materials you know how to work with, the tools you know how to work with, and you know, make a wheel that suits your needs specifically in terms of you know the functionality you want, the aesthetic you want. Maybe you want to build a wheel that's an exact replica of a real race car, or maybe you want to do something that's like your own kind of custom thing. You'll be able to learn a lot as well, as I mentioned, in groups like the uh, the Discord channel. So it's a great, great hobby to get into. So the first subject and decision you're going to have to make is probably going to be what you want to make your front plate out of. And based on that, you'll probably end up getting things like your paddles. And if there's a rear plate made out of the same material. So you have different options for this. You can do it yourself. There's a lot of different materials that you can choose from. I personally have, you know, tried several different things out and kind of my tastes have changed a little bit as I've gone through stuff, but you've got options like doing it out of aluminum. There's carbon fiber, which is more expensive. I've tried out 3D printing and I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, how viable that is for kind of printing out a little bit of a mock-up so that you can work on the wheel as you're kind of, you know, getting other materials in and waiting for the services to cut whatever your other front plates might be cut out of. 
you want to make that decision early on and it'll kind of end up guiding and dictating some of your other decisions down the road. I'll talk about some different services that you can, you know, choose some types of aluminum material or stainless steel if you want to use to. Real quick shout out to Sin Cut Send if you want to do something out of a metal like aluminum. They offer laser cutting services. They're super, super fast. They give you instant quotes. The pricing is very, very competitive. I'll talk about them in more detail. So that'll be a video and then the next video will likely be covering specifically grips. Now I think a lot of people kind of skimp out or skip out or don't really think about the grips. They're likely going to be the next thing that you put onto the wheel depending on what type of build it is. And you know, depending on if you want to wrap them, you will definitely want to get that done before you start putting other stuff on because it's going to be very hard to wrap grips while you have other components sticking out of it. So why are grips so important? It's because they are where your hands meet the wheel. It's where your hands are going to be attached to for the majority of the time you're racing. You want them to be sturdy, ergonomic and you want them to be comfortable so zach produces absolutely fantastic grips so if you're going to go for that bare bones kit you're going to get the benefit of having his casted uh polyurethane rubber uh grips they're going to be something like a 70a shore rating so they're going to be nice and comfortable you can choose to wrap those if you want but it'll be a really really great start other options are going to be 3d printing and then you're going to have a lot of material options and a few different methods to be able to wrap the grips if you want to i'm not an expert at wrapping I'm nowhere near as good as Zach, but I've produced some, you know, pretty decent results. So I'll share some of those techniques and then hopefully some other people, you know, if you have an upholstery background, maybe you can share some tips with me. So you want to get those grips figured out, get those on there, get them produced. And uh, once they're on there, you can kind of start moving to some of the other areas of the build. So after you've gotten the grips figured out, the next step is probably gonna be doing some of the major components like rear enclosures, uh, hubs, adapters, uh, wiring covers and button inserts and things like that. And the most likely um, kind of solution for that is going to be 3D printing. So this will be a very 3D printing heavy episode. I'll go over materials that you can use um, printers that you might want to look into if you're looking to buy a 3D printer, services that you can use. There's actually different 3D printing technologies like FDM, which is, you know, the most approachable ones, but there's also um, SLA or resin-based printing. And then there's services which offer things like uh, SLS, which is selective laser centering, which uh, produce really, really high quality products. And the pricing is actually coming down on those. So again, depending on that budget that you have, depending on what uh, things you have access to, you can scale those up, up and down. But I've been able to uh, get some pretty good results uh, with 3D printing. You can produce good looking parts that are also very, very strong. And you know, those don't have to be exactly uh, opposed to each other. But I'll, I'll try to explain as much as I can. I have six 3D printers myself, so I use them for a lot of different uh, stuff. I do some contracting work and I do have a little bit of a printing service. So that might be something we can talk about if you don't have access to a 3D printer. So after you get all of your stuff 3D printed and CNC'd or cut by hand and you have all the parts that you need and you're ready to get into the electronics, a big decision you're gonna have to make is what board you want to use. And by board, I mean kind of a microcontroller. There are things like kind of prefabbed little joystick controllers that you can just plug buttons into and plug joysticks into or uh, analog inputs. And they have a USB out that'll go straight into your computer and you're done. They're gonna be limited in the number of things you can do. There are also more high-end offerings from companies like Leo Bodner and uh, Derek Spears DSD. They have some prefab boards that offer a little bit more functionality. They're more specifically aimed at sim racing applications. So they're gonna have more inputs also going to be a number of programmable uh, microprocessors that you can use. Arduino is being the most popular uh, in all of making and you know even a lot of product based stuff right now but you've also got stuff like Teensy boards, uh, ESP32 boards which have wireless built in so that's a good option for steering wheels and then there are you know STM boards which have more advanced ARM processors and stuff like that so you know whether or not you're a programmer 
Uh, it's going to kind of guide whether or not you want to use kind of a prefab pre flashed board or if you like programming you can you know do a lot of that nitty gritty stuff yourself but there are some things that can help you along with this there are little software projects like SimHub and FreeJoy and I think MMJoy which that will allow you to do some kind of parametric automatic programming of them you just tell them what you want hooked up and it'll handle a lot of the programming for you so even if you don't have the programming experience um, you can get tools like that and then there's a whole host of resources like the discord I already mentioned where you can get a lot of help with how to do stuff so you know you get that controller picked out and then you can move on and that's going to dictate which inputs and how many inputs you can use so you've got your microcontroller picked out and maybe you even have it mounted on there and you're ready to go now you need other electronics and that's Kind of what I have here, um, I've run the gambit and, and bought and experimented with a lot of different buttons, ranging from a dollar button up to $25 buttons, and you have a lot of options there. I'll talk about a lot of these different product offerings, what different people like. This is gonna be, gonna be one of the most subjective areas. People like really different feels with buttons. Some people don't care, they just want the lowest budget stuff. Other people want you know, to try to reproduce the what's in an actual replica wheel or in a real life car wheel as much as possible so you've got a wide spectrum of there you've got different types of buttons you've got rotary encoders rotary switches toggle uh, buttons and things like that so I'll try to cover as much of that stuff uh, some of the options I'll have links to a lot of things but again the turn racing discord server we have a, a resources channel where you can go there and people will have a lot of information already linked to digikey and Amazon and eBay where you can go and pick those up I also talk a little bit about wiring and soldering. I'm not a professional when it comes to soldering. I can do more than what's adequate in order to get solid connections and that's the most important thing. But it is a little bit of a science and an art form. Some people really like to spend a lot of time and make every single solder joint perfect, clean up all the flux and all that kind of stuff. But uh, there's some very complicated wiring which can get involved in creating DIY wheels which is called matrix wiring which allows you to get a lot more inputs into your microcontroller if it's limited. And that can be a little bit difficult, a little bit hard to understand so I'll talk a little bit about some of the options you have there including uh, some breakout boards. Uh, I, I've really started to get into designing PCBs and at first it was very daunting but it's actually becoming more and more approachable. There are services you can send out to have custom PCBs printed to the point where it's almost practical to do it for a single build now. It used to be if you weren't creating a product, it kind of didn't make sense to have you know uh, an order sent out to a company because they were gonna make you buy at least five. Now it's getting to the point where you know getting those five boards built and even um, getting them filled with parts can be as low as like $25. So it's becoming much more of a viable option. I won't go into huge detail about that, but I'll try to give you guys some ideas and uh, again, some more resources that you can go to if that's what you wanna get into. So one thing I'm a little torn on is whether or not I wanna make a video specific to shifters. That's another kind of one of those very, very, I'll say subjective things. People really like different characteristics out of shifters. Uh, what's very, very popular in sim racing are magnetic shifters. So you've got magnets which are attracting the arm to the mount and they make a very kind of satisfying clicking sound. Uh, and they feel really, really good. You get good tactile feeling that they've been engaged and unengaged, but they can be a little loud. So there's some things that people do in order to kind of dampen them. I'll talk about that a little bit. There are pre-made uh, shifters that you can buy. These are from Zach at Turn Racing. They're the Turn Shifters, absolutely amazing shifters. Uh, fabricated out of aluminum and uh, I think they're anodized and they have a really really nice finish but you can also do things like 3d printing your own shifters buy shifters from other place so I'll go over a lot of that the switches that go into the shifters people are also kind of a little um, subjective and, and and have different ones that they want to pick out so I'll talk about that and yeah I think I'll end up doing a whole video just on shifters there's some things that you need to Think about when you're especially 3d printing shifters um, orienting them in a the right way to make them you know stronger and uh, being able to last through a lot of uses so yeah we'll do a whole video on shifters maybe i'll cover a little bit about paddles in there as well so then the final thing is going to be actually doing the final assembly uh, there's going to be kind of two ways a lot of people go about it they'll kind of build as they get parts and then some people like me you like to have everything laid out in front of them and kind of build it you know kind of like a lego 
Lego set or something like that. And so I'll probably walk you through the entire process that I went through to build this wheel from start to finish. And we'll do some finishing things like uh, decals, where you can get stickers, how you can print your own and cut your own stickers if you want to. So that'll be kind of an all encompassing bringing everything together style video where you can see step by step and I'll cover any difficulties I might come into, you know, that you can't really predict. Um, but one great thing about Zach's DIY files is he's built the wheels usually by the time he's made them into a DIY file. So he's going to have run into a lot of those problems. And again, we also have the uh, turn racing discord channel where you can find out uh, about, about a lot of the problems people have run into and you don't have to resolve those problems. People can say, oh yeah, I ran into that exact same problem. Here's what I did. And you know, it'll save you a lot of time and hopefully make you end up with a better wheel. So that is it for this kind of introductory video. Hopefully it gave you a good idea of a lot of the different componentry and things that you're gonna have to consider uh, if you're getting into the hobby and want to build your own DIY wheel. Again, you can do replicas, you can do somebody else's design, you can design something from the ground up yourself. If you guys are interested in the 3D modeling aspect of that, Zach has a couple of videos up on how he actually did some of the 3D modeling for this wheel. He also builds um, some custom bespoke stuff for real race car drivers, uh, guys and GT series all the way up to Formula One. So he's done some videos covering those as well. I'm not an expert at 3D design, but you know, I've been able to do a lot of tweaks to Zach's files to make them suit what I need. I'm using a Logitech uh, wheelbase right now. So I needed a specific adapter and I was able to take his files and uh, tweak them so that they would made up for my adapter. But um, I'm really enjoying this process. It's they're my two favorite hobbies right now are making and uh, doing uh, sim racing stuff. So being able to smash them together has been great. I also like making YouTube videos. So I'm gonna be sharing uh, as much information as I can with you guys. So that is it for this video. If you made it to the whole video, give me a, an oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, 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 oh. oh dear. Oh dear me. For uh, Dave Cam, since I'm wearing the Dave Cam shirt, great YouTuber for sim racing. If you want to check him out, I'll probably have a link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I really uh, am happy to be sharing this project and my passion with you guys. So I will see you in subsequent videos. Peace.